Hello everyone, welcome to session 7 of moving charges and magnetism. So in my session 2, I had discussed about the force on a current carrying conductor due to a magnetic field. Now, if I have a conductor, the current flowing in this current conductor is in this direction. Then if I place this conductor in a magnetic field, the conductor experiences certain force and that force is given by the formula I B L sin theta. I is the current in the conductor, B is the magnetic field applied, L is the length of the conductor and theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the length element. So this is what the force experienced or I can also write this formula as I L cross B. If you don't remember this, go back to session 2, uh, we have already discussed this. Now using this formula, we are going to derive the force between two parallel current carrying conductors. Let us now derive the force between two parallel current carrying conductors. Now what do you mean by parallel current carrying conductors? So if the direction of the current is in the same direction, that is I have two conductors carrying current I1 and I2, the directions of the current is in the same direction, it is upwards, both I1 and I2 is in the same direction, then I am going to call it as parallel current and these two conductors are placed D distance apart, I am going to consider D as the distance between these two conductors. Now this Derivation is a very important derivation will be asked for 5 marks from this chapter and at the end of this derivation using this formula we are going to define ampere. So very important derivation asked for 5 marks. Next coming to this if I have a conductor carrying current as you know the magnetic field will be produced around this conductor and these magnetic field lines are going to form a closed loop. So this is the direction of the current, my thumb is in the direction of the current and the fingers of my right hand are going to curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So magnetic field goes in and comes out, into and out. So the magnetic field is in, out. So this is what the direction is. If I place another cond conductor somewhere here, I am placing one more conductor carrying current I somewhere here, then this conductor experiences force, magnetic force due to this conductor uh, 1. So this is conductor 1 and this is current carrying conductor 2. I am placing the conductor 2 in the vicinity of conductor 1 so that the magnetic field or magnetic force is experienced by the second conductor due to the first one. This is what we are going to check. What will be that force which is experienced by the second conductor due to the first one. Here I have this first conductor. I am going to name it as C1 D1 and this as C2 D2. See these conductors are infinitely long conductors. So I am considering a small line segment, length segment here that is C1D1 and here C2D2 and let us consider the length of this segment is L. I am considering a small length segment which is having length L. Next, the magnetic field experienced by this conductor, second conductor due to the first conductor will be. First, let me see what will be the direction of the magnetic field. Let me consider some point P on C2, D2. And at this point P, the magnetic field will be in what direction? So, the current I1 is in this direction. The magnetic field goes in and comes out. So, it is going in and coming out therefore the magnetic field will be in this direction and this magnetic field should be written as B1 as this magnetic field is due to the first conductor. It is B1 because I am writing the magnetic field due to the first conductor and remember one more thing the second conductor which is carrying current I2 on this conductor there is no magnetic field due to this current I2. The magnetic 
field or the magnetic force on the conductor due to the current I2 is 0. The magnetic field here at the point P is present only because of the first conductor C1, D1. Okay. Now, this is the direction of magnetic field. Now, if this is the direction of current, this is what the direction of magnetic field is. It is inwards here. So, what is the angle between them? It is 90 degree. In whatever direction you are going to take, they are all perpendicular to each other. So, if, if, if this is the current carrying conductor, the magnetic field will be perpendicular to it. So, I1 and B1 are perpendicular to each other. Next, let us write the magnetic field first. We have already studied from the Ampere circuit law. I have a current carrying conductor I. What will be the magnetic field at some point P, which is R distance away? It is given by B is equal to mu naught I by 2 pi R. Ampere circuit loss first application B is equal to mu naught I by 2 pi R. You, let us now use this one. The magnetic field B1 on the point P is given by B1 is equal to mu naught I1 by 2 pi D. Mu naught is the absolute permeability of free space. I1 is the current in the first conductor. Because the magnetic field B1 is due to the current I1, I am writing I1 here, divided by 2 pi D, D is the distance between the two conductors. Therefore, B1 is mu naught I1 by 2 pi D. This is the magnetic field experienced at point P due to C1, D1. Now, let us write the force. Force is the force on the second conductor due to the first conductor. F21 is equal to, we know the formula, F is equal to I, B, L sin theta. Let us write this formula, I, B, L sin theta. Now, the force on the second conductor due to the first conductor will be equal to the current in the second conductor is I2. But magnetic field is due to the first conductor into the length into sin theta. What is sin theta? Theta is as you have seen the current is in this direction upwards and the magnetic field is perpendicular to it. Therefore, you are going to consider theta to be 90 degree sin 90 is 1. Therefore, F21 is equal to I2 B1 L. Now, substitute for B1, you get mu naught I1 I2 by 2 pi D into L. So, do not get confused. Whenever you are considering the magnetic field at point P, the magnetic field at point P will be due to the first conductor. But the current flowing in this conductor is I2. Therefore, magnetic field B1 will be equal to mu naught I1 by 2 pi D. And while writing the force, it is equal to I2 B1 into L. Therefore, the force on the second conductor due to the first conductor will be equal to mu naught I1 I2 by 2 pi D into the length L. Now, let us find what will be the force direction. This is the magnitude of the force. What is the direction of the force? Using the left hand rule, I have to use a left hand rule here. Listen, uh, while using the left hand rule, you are going to stretch your thumb, forefinger and the middle finger mutually perpendicular to each other. Now, your middle finger indicates the direction of the current, which is upwards. Your forefinger indicates the direction of the magnetic field, which is inwards. So, the middle finger is in the direction of current upwards. Your forefinger is, should be in the direction of the magnetic field, which is inwards. Then, if you look at your thumb, it indicates the direction of the force and it will be in this direction. This is F to 1 which is in this direction. So, once again I will repeat the left hand rule stretch the 
middle finger, forefinger and thumb of your left hand mutually perpendicular to each other. Your middle finger indicates the direction of the current. Your forefinger indicates the direction of the magnetic field. Then your thumb indicates the direction of the force experienced at the point P. Next, so I can write the direction of force as a force is in the plane of the paper, it is in the plane of the paper perpendicular to C2D2 and towards C1D1. So, you can see it is in the plane of this board and it is perpendicular to C2D2 and it is towards, it is directed towards C1D1. That is the direction of the force. Now, according to Newton's third law, we can say the first conductor is exerting force on the second conductor. Similarly, the second conductor also exerts force on the first conductor. Let us write what is the force experienced by the first conductor due to the second one. Now, the force F12, force experienced by the first conductor due to the second conductor will be equal to I B L sin theta. So, you know the current in this first conductor is I1, therefore this is I1. Coming to the magnetic field, the first conductor experiences magnetic force due to the second conductor, therefore this is B2 into the length of the conductor L and theta is the angle between B and L. You can see this is I and the magnetic field, uh, here the direction of magnetic field will be, so this if this is the direction of the current I2, the magnetic field is coming out. So if I consider any point Q on the first conductor, on this point Q, the magnetic field is coming outwards. Therefore, this is the direction of B2. Now, if this is the direction of B2, the current I, I1 and B2 are perpendicular to each other. Sin 90 is 1. Therefore, F12 can be written as I1 B2 L. So, this can be written as I1 B2. B2 formula is mu naught I2 by 2 pi d. I2 because the magnetic field B2 is due to the current I2 into L or I can write this as F12 is equal to mu naught I1 I2 by 2 pi d into L. And what is the direction of F12? Using left hand rule, the direction of current is indicated by the middle finger upwards and the direction of the magnetic field is outwards then the direction of the force will be in this direction that is this will be the direction of the force F12. So, the direction of current is indicated by the middle finger, direction of the magnetic field is indicated by the forefinger which is outwards, then the direction of force is in this direction. You can see the magnitude of F12 and the magnitude of F21 are equal, are the same. But what about the direction? They are opposite in direction. So, you can say that the like currents that is the parallel currents ha are having force which is attracting towards each other. Therefore, I write F12 is equal to minus F21. They are equal in magnitude and they are attractive. Next, let us write the force per unit length. The force per unit length F by L is equal to mu naught I1 I2 by 2 pi D. This is the force experienced by these conductors 
per unit length and if the current is parallel to each other then the force is attractive if the current is anti parallel then the force will be repulsive so this is opposite to the electrostatics where we say right like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other so here the like currents are attracting and unlike currents will repel so the force per unit length is given by the formula mu not i1 i2 by 2 pi d now if i say i1 is equal to i2 is equal to 1 ampere and the distance between the two conductors is taken to be 1 meter then what is the force per unit length that is equal to mu naught by I am going to make this as 4 pi as I know the value of mu naught by 4 pi into 2 I1 is 1 I2 is 1 divided by d d is 1 meter again so this is equal to 2 into mu naught by 4 pi value is 10 power minus 7 Newton per meter so using this formula I am going to define what is 1 ampere ok so defining 1 ampere so 1 ampere is that steady current when flowing through two parallel long straight conductors which are placed 1 meter apart in vacuum so we have two straight parallel conductors which in which one ampere of current steady current is flowing and these conductors should be placed one meter apart and it is placed in vacuum as I have taken mu naught it is placed in vacuum then what is the force experienced per unit length the force experienced per unit length is 2 into 10 power minus 7 so the definition of one ampere is one ampere is that steady current which flows through a long straight parallel conductors long straight parallel conductors placed 1 meter apart in vacuum experiences a force of 2 into 10 power minus 7 Newton per meter this is how you define 1 ampere and while deriving this equation in your question paper they are going to ask the question as uh, derive the force between two parallel straight long wires and hence define 1 ampere so totally if you also define this 1 ampere with diagram then you are going to get 5 marks in this derivation so this is the end of the session we will meet you in the next session thank you